Hi, I'm Jason, and welcome to the next part in the uh, N-Scale Switching Layout Build. Uh, as you can see, uh, over the last few videos, uh, we've uh, covered this with foam, uh, put our fascia board on. After doing the last video, I decided to take some of the advice that I kind of put in that video, and uh, I got some wood filler and decided to kind of clean up some of the little small gaps that I had between the foam and the fascia board. Uh, it wasn't a perfect fit, uh, and that was mostly because of uh, when I was cutting the foam board, there were a couple of areas where the knife deviated just slightly and created a little bit of a slight gap. Actually, on this module here, this actually ended up being a very nice tight fit without having to really do any of that, except for in this corner here. Uh, I was able to fill it in pretty nicely and sand it down. I ended up using the Adapt, this wood, uh, they call it Plastic Wood X. This stuff's pretty good for a couple of reasons. One, it's a good consistency. It's almost like a uh, like a loose Play-Doh, uh, so it's easy to work with. Uh, it's pink, which is uh, unsettling at first, and then it actually turns a natural beige color as it dries. So that's a nice indicator of when this stuff is completely dry. Okay, just want to give you a little bit of a close-up here of some of the wood filler work that I did. Now, this was probably more of a anal retentive thing I did. This really was not that necessary. Now, this corner right here, there was a there was a slight little gap where the where two pieces of fascia board came together. And um, I was going to try to dress this up with a, maybe a piece of hardwood or something. And then I realized if I just filled this in with the wood filler, I could just come back and sand it and give it a nice little kind of 45 chamfer, which is really uh which is really what I ended up doing here. And uh, that actually came out pretty nicely. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, up here, uh, you can see where I filled in a little bit. And I just, just kind of filled in down along the line here. Uh, I did end up, uh, since I already had the wood filler out, I ended up filling in between the two pieces of foam. Now, granted, this is just a, a superficial kind of covering of this. And even then you can still see there's, there is a slight little line you can still see, but after paint and a little bit of scenery, that's really not going to be visible. Uh, on this module, you can see how the foam buds up nice and tight to the uh, fascia board. It did actually a very nice job on this one. I'm not entirely sure why that one down there came out as poorly as it did, but that's okay. On this corner, did the exact same thing. I'm trying to get the light right here so you can actually see it. Uh, filled it in with the wood filler and then sanded it. This little corner was a little bit inset. It was actually, you can barely see right here, you can see where the foam got compressed a little bit. So that's actually what caused that. So I filled that in a little bit. It's not perfect, but it will do. It will be fine. And did a little bit of wood filler down on this end. But other than that, um, it's ready to go for painting. Okay, and as you can see, uh, the surface is pretty well prepped. It's been sanded. It's ready to go for paint. And that's the whole purpose of this video is to talk about painting and actually do the painting. When I'm working on a small uh, project like this, small surface, I really like to use these uh, little foam rollers. They, This is, I think, a four inch. They make a six. I, I think that might be the biggest is a six inch. Anyways, these are nice. They're not too expensive. I got them at Home Depot. Get a two pack of them. I think it's about five bucks for two. And really, when you think about it, five bucks is worth uh, being able to use these and then just toss them and not have to worry about cleaning them. You can clean these, but they're really not worth, at that price, it's really not worth cleaning them. So I've got two of those uh, because I've got two colors I'm going to do. Uh, I've got a, um, a brown. It's going to be hard to tell on the camera, but they are a little sample color there. But uh, this is a, a brown, uh, I picked something that was, you know, a good kind of uh, uh, soil brown, if you will. That's going to be for the top. And then I've got a good flat black uh, that's going to be the outside of the fascia board. For a project this small, I think that these little samples are going to do just fine. I think, it's going to, I think there's going to be more than enough black to do the fascia board. The brown, I'll probably use up just about all this brown doing it, but that's okay. The process I'm going to use is I'm actually going to do all the brown first, and I'm going to just be very careful at the edges. Even if a little does get on the fascia board, it's not a big deal, because after the brown is down, I'm going to let that dry for about an hour, then I'll come back with the black and do the fascia board. And the fascia board, when we do that, we're going to be very careful not to get black up over the edge, over the top edge, because uh, I want to cover up any brown that might have gotten over there. So it's, it's just a matter of just being 
gentle and and careful and um, deliberate with uh, how you're painting. You know, you're doing your process. So, all right, enough talking. Let's uh, let's get to it. We'll start with the uh, the brown. Now, if this can was a little bit taller, I would dip this in. I could dip it in like this, and you'll get a majority. But unfortunately, it's not quite. So I think what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, maybe doing pouring out a little bit and then kind of spreading that out and then moving moving down. So I think that might be the, the technique to use here. And while uh, complete coverage is uh, per preferable, uh, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to, uh, uh, in the end, add uh, actual brown cover and, and other things like that that's going to cover up any imperfections, really. Okay, that's, uh, that seems to be working. And there are a little dose here. And again, I'm sure there's some people cringing at what I'm doing here. Uh, do it however you want. I'm just showing you how I do it. And uh, this works for me. One of the things you will notice with these uh, little rollers is that if they get too much paint on them, they actually won't roll. They'll actually start sliding. So it's, um, it is worth uh, kind of watching how much paint you roll out or, or you'll put out at a time or else you'll not get the control of the roller that you're expecting. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just filling in the bulk majority and then uh, once the paint on the roller is a little bit less than, uh, than uh, full, now I'll come back and work this edge. And as long as there's not too much paint on the roller, meaning that it's kind of like sopping, dripping, which you don't want, it's really, uh, that's really going to be the best way to keep a nice, tight, uh, cor uh, uh, line to the to the edge of the uh, of the bench work here. I'm trying to prevent anything getting over the edge, so that way I can have a nice clean clean edge. And I'll do the same thing when I do the uh, the black for the fascia board. Okay, that looks pretty good. Move on to the next section here. And I'll use some of the uh, excess paint over here since I didn't get as heavy a coverage. I can use it over here. And, and, and the other trick with a roller is not to press too tightly or too heavy because you will get a line at the edge of the roller if you don't kind of have a, a gentle hand. Kind of, It's the old adage of, you know, let the tool do the work. And uh, that's, uh, that's absolutely true here as well. You just kind of want to let the roller do the work. Let it, uh, let it spread the paint out evenly. Uh, you don't have to put a whole lot of muscle into it. The roller lets you know when it needs paint. Let's put it that way. Um, if you're having to really press hard to try to squeeze the paint out of the roller, then it's time to add more paint to the roller. That's really what it comes down to. Now just do some big sweeping rolls here just to kind of even anything out that uh, might be a little off. And as you can see, I'm just kind of holding this with a few fingers. I'm not really putting any kind of uh, pressure on this and it's doing just fine. It's, there we go. That actually looks really, really good. That's uh, good and even. Uh, uh, coverage is, is, is um, you know, consistent throughout. So, okay, uh, we'll let this dry for about an hour and then come back and do the black fascia board. But in the uh, magic of video, it's going to happen right now. See, I told you you wouldn't have to wait. Okay, I'm done with the paint and it uh, looks really good. Uh, the brown uh, definitely dried a nice flat, which is which is exactly what I wanted. I didn't want anything glossy, semi-gloss, anything like that. And I guess I should have mentioned that at the beginning of the video. 
when you do pick out your paint, a good flat paint really is the best way to go, especially for your top. Now, it's kind of dealer's choice when it comes to uh, what you want to do your facial board in. You don't even have to paint the facial board. I just tend to like to paint it black because I think it's a nice contrast. Um, it's an old theater trick. Anything that you don't want the person's eyes to concentrate on, you paint black. And typically flat black because you don't want light to reflect off of it. And that directs their eyes towards the scenery or in, on a stage, for example, it would, it would focus their eyes towards the set construction or the actors or whatever uh, and not towards the uh, you know outside because even when you're uh, seeing in a theater at a uh, for a play or something you can kind of sort of see uh, you know the back behind the stage a little bit the you know where the lights are and everything and by having that all black it, it really concentrates your eyes and it's the same concept here uh, you want to focus your eyes on the actual layout, not on the bench work. And I guess you could take that one step closer or further and you could even paint the legs and everything black. I'm not going to do that. That's not necessary. Uh, but the fascia will look very nice. Uh, when it's dry, it will be nice and flat black and it will look real nice. So, anyways, thanks for sticking through this video as well. And in the next video, I think I'm going to start going over some of the track layout as far as the uh, track plan and uh, how the whole layouts can actually uh, uh, be laid out on the, uh, on the actual uh, bench work. So uh, look forward to that in the next video. And until then, thanks for watching.